Guys, good Friday morning. My name is Jerry Miller and welcome to Real Talk with Keith Smith. Thank you kindly for joining us. It's a Father's Day special with maybe my favorite holiday right around the corner. Um, Real Talk with Keith Smith presented by Keller Williams Alliance and Yes Realty Partners. We have a Charlottesville, Central Virginia, Fluvanna County, Commonwealth, country, and worldwide audience today on Real Talk with Keith Smith. Judah Woodcower is our director. And if we can go to the studio camera and welcome a true cast of characters <laughs> this morning, Carrie Rock, this is gonna be a, a podcast star, Carrie Rock, a father of two, Carrie Rock, a veteran, Carrie Rock, a man who works in IT. See, this is why I come on the show. Like loving you. husband. <laughs> Best intros ever. Caring father, all around great guy, the head of Do Good Seville with his beautiful wife, Colleen. How about Pop Smith in the house? After that, like, who could match that? <laughs> we got Pop Smith in the house. This man is a, a grandfather, a great-grandfather. Yeah. A great-grandfather. Great-great-grandfather. He's the father of the distinguished gentleman, Keith Smith. I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of fun with that right there, yeah, Pop Smith. I don't know. Who was the one that set this stage up? That you yeah. did. Uh, no, no, no. I'm talking about where everybody's sitting. Oh, that's a Judah. <laughs> that's that's a the Judah. power. Nice going there, director. <laughs> power. And there's Keith Smith, the yeah. star of our show. Good morning. And, and, and Keith. And Keith, <laughs> and Keith. Uh, who's married to Yona. Is married to Yona. Yeah. Oh, God. I tell You're you better that, seven eight. Did I tell you that the other day? I was at a car board meeting, and somebody at the board meeting couldn't remember, Charlottesville Association of Boardmen, couldn't remember my name. And they went, Yona's husband. You're Yona's husband. <laughs> and I went, There's nothing more... You know, that can build up one's esteem of going, yeah, you're Yona's <laughs> husband. Um, Alex Zerpe, good morning, and thank you for the kind Father's Day wishes. All right, well, why don't we introduce ourselves? So, Kerry Rock, the show's yours. Uh, Darren Keat, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, Kerry Rock, uh, co-founder of Do Good Seville. Uh, but for this show, father of two little girls. Got a five-month-old, almost six months, and uh, just another one just over two years old. Uh, as you mentioned, we got the podcast uh, Real Life Dad Life, four episodes in, recording episode five and six tonight. Awesome. Uh, all the fun stuff of being a dad. Um, two daughters, Keith Smith. Yeah, I, 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 I feel your pain, brother. <laughs> it's, well, right now, I'm the picture of happiness and complete exhaustion because we're going through the sleep regression with sure. uh, our youngest one. Um, but yeah, had one of those per picture perfect, horrible, yet great mornings with the daughter. Like, she was helping dress the younger one and took out both my shins with drawers and then stepped on my toe like being an elephant. <coughs> but then she sang Frozen in the greatest way possible with a big flourish at the end. As soon as we got to date care, I'm like, how can I not love her endlessly? Sure. So it's, that, that was the picture of being a father or dad to me today. <clears throat> well, I'm the father of a 36-year-old? How i got to double-check this pop. Check, check me if I'm wrong. A 36 I lost count. You lost, yeah, what, kids? <laughs> yeah, that, after five. Uh, with Who five, are we talking about? It's okay. It's okay, pop. It's all right. Have another uh, sip. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, Have another sip, pop. smack me every once in a while. Uh, of 36 and Yvonne... I want you should say, know how old your daughter is. I don't. You should know yeah, how old your daughter is. Yeah, she's 36. And I know... Yeah. It's very simple for me. I know how old... Yasmina is because it's the same amount of years we're married. There you go. Because uh, uh, Yasmina was born before we got married because when I was on was in Marine Corps and I was on MSG duty, you couldn't get married. I had to sign a contract. Couldn't get married. And we made the decision uh, to fulfill one contract before we entered into another contract. So Yasmina, I got. Yvonne. This is his youngest daughter. Yeah, He's watching I, from I, Seattle. I think 27, 28. Okay. You are so me. in trouble. Well, uh, yeah. on a previous look, show, look. he didn't remember her middle name. Uh, no, no, no. Remembering their first names becomes <laughs> a struggle. Have you ever had that happen to you? No, because they're my daughters. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Well, the show over. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about Pop? Let's get Pop in the mix. Pop, you've got to introduce yourself to everybody that's watching. Everyone in this region knows you as Pop. Everybody in the world. That's what I am. Pop. You're Pop. Yeah. Tell us well, about yourself. Well, I'm uh, 82. Okay. Uh, father of five children and is it 10 or 11 grandchildren and two <laughs> great-grandchildren. And I'm here to wish everybody, uh, everybody that's a father or will be a father, happy Father's Day. So I think that's it's it. I think it's. You want to give me my life from uh, from yeah, there? Sure. I would love. We, we got an hour and a half. You can do whatever you want. 
You can do whatever. Yeah, yeah. 82, you can Don't, do whatever the hell you want. I'll have a couple more. <laughs> there we go. Uh, no, you want uh, a nice little bourbon, a Buffalo Trace No, we, uh, we came down to, I'm a retired New York City fire officer, and we built, we came down here and we built some homes, and we're re totally retired now, because I can't do anything. <laughs> but, it, was, uh, it was interesting, you were late this morning. I, I don't think yeah. I've ever, ever, ever well, seen that happen. Well, I, I said, uh, I got in the car with Keith, I said, thank God I don't have to show up every day. I was, uh, you know, you get to that retirement stage, you know, well, I'll take a little more time, I'll do this, do that. And not, a, not when you guys hit the, hit the foot, the deck, you're going, this and that, you know. Now, uh, kind of like a lot of, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, so holy smoly, it's, I'm late. So, Navy used to be late. The Navy, you always had to be 15 minutes before the time. Is that the same in the Army? Yeah. Yeah. And in the firehouse, we were always early. Always early. So we should highlight that. We have three veterans on the show. We have Army with Kerry Rock. Navy with Pop Smith, Leonard Smith, and we have the Marine Corps. You with, saved the with, best for last. With obviously. Keith Smith, we got four. Obviously, obviously, obviously. obviously. There's, a, there's. Oh, he's getting up. He's gonna. Walk. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 I'll, I'll tell a very interesting story about that. Um, so the duty that I was on, I never wore a uniform, and uh, so we had to go down to Fort Gordon, in Georgia, and do some. Um, little bit of work about rappelling off of little birds, doing some extractions and, 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 and entries and all this stuff. And so the night before we went to the officer club because we carried diplomatic passports and we didn't have that and being 19 year old guys, you know, that's what you do, right? So of course we get into drinking a little bit and we get into talking about, you know, Marine Corps is great, Army sucks, yada, 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 you know, what we're supposed to do, right? <laughs> yeah. The, day, the mo next morning, guess who our two pilots were? The guys we were busting the chops for. Wow. That's how it works. Like, yeah. That's how it works. Except, you know, we were supposed to rappel behind the bottom of the helicopter and then pop on top of the building the next, you know, make our entry into it. But there was a swamp around there, and they put us in the swamp, and there was a 15-mile hump through the swamp. Good training. Good training. Good, good training. Good lesson to learn was be very nice to who you meet at the bar because they could be your pilots <laughs> the next morning. Well, here's a question for you, veterans. Again, Navy, Army, and Marine Corps We're in the house. Air Force. Um, does serving in the military, did it influence or shape fatherhood and how you were a father and, yeah. and the process of being a dad with your kids? I'm going to go age first. Yeah, Pop, what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> this is well, a Father's Day special. Well, I, I, uh, You're good. <laughs> talk about fathers. Uh, uh, we grew up in New York, uh, Queens, New York, and uh, I was 17 years old, going nowhere. Uh, and my father said to me, you're going in the Navy. So I got signed in, and whatever my father said, that was it. You know, he was uh, a great guy. Uh, anyway, so I went in the Navy, and uh, I was kind of like every time I blinked, I was in a new world, you know, 17 years old. And, we, uh, at that time, when I got aboard my ship, we had some draftees that were in the Navy, which was unusual, because they're usually all volunteers at that time. At that time, their draft was there. So uh, I was like a little kid, you know, and uh, I was very happy to, uh, they treated me well, and uh, I learned a lot and grew up, you know, just, uh, you learned, uh, and a lot of the people that we were with were, married, uh, you know, with children at, at the, we were stationed in Norfolk, and uh, they were at sea, for, we were at sea for, I guess, nine months, and they were away for nine months, you know, so that was a little uh, different, you know, uh, you weren't always home, the, the military families, but as I got through the, uh, my, I was on different assignments, I just said, well, if I was going to get married, I would never stay in the military. You know, I not made that at same that time. decision too. Did you make that same decision? Oh, I got married long after I was out of the military. Mm -hmm. no. Well, it was just too too hard on every on everything, you know. And uh, I'll, uh, if the girls, my girls, are watching, um, you know, apologize first. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll get your age right, I swear. Uh, no, they won't. I, it, believe me, I've called them everything from their actual name to the dog. So, uh, but, uh, you know, do you have the knife hand in the Army? Yeah. Yeah. So... I was going like, to bring that up. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, uh, they'll tell you, you know, when dad starts doing the knife hand. But I'll, I'll remember, so the, uh, uh, us tell a story on Pop. I, um, and I don't know what it is. I don't know how you can remember. I, I can't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday, but I can remember kindergarten. Okay. And, you know, it's an age thing. You'll get there one day, buddy. Uh, and so I, in the fire service, in the New York City Fire Department, they use naval terms, right? Right. Right, it's a whole different language, yeah. So, so a head is a head, is a bathroom, right? Uh, the deck is the floor. So I, overhead ceiling. So I always knew, I always knew the bathroom was a head. I didn't know the bathroom was a bathroom as a kid growing up because we always called in the house that. So just imagine as a five year old going to kindergarten, raising, where's the head? Raising your hand up, <laughs> asking some teacher, "Hey, where's the head?" To say I got sent to the principal office yeah. would be understood. so that started a long career of going to the principal office a little bit, little bit too much. Um, but you, you told me something the other day, Pop, and that I did not, um, I did not really actually put two and two together until you told me. So tell a little bit about you know Grandpa, my father, your father, my grandfather, went into World War II. You were how old? Three. Well, I was born in '39. He went in 42. And he got uh, out when? F and he got out in 45. He could return in 45. But I only remember seeing my father once during the time he went in till, till he came home. It was the father, and, and you know, we really should talk about the mothers during that time. What they did is to hold the families together was amazing. And uh, it was a different time, you know. Uh, there was no, uh, how can I say, like the military today, as I understand it, is a little bit more out for the members. They, they help them, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, they are, uh, you know, it's, they would tell you, you will do this. There wasn't a question, do you want to do it? You will do it, you know. And, uh, but uh, my father, I don't remember, till, I remember him coming home. How old were you at that time? Well, I would be six, right? 39 to 40, uh, 45, or five and a half, or six, around six. And he had had his sea bag, and we were taking out artifacts, and uh, he brought home for my sister and I. Uh, my sister was a year, and, a year and a half older than I was. But that was a hard time for all families. Uh, when they, they didn't, I was talking to sailors, they were, they were 24 months at sea. You know, never, never, you know, the supply, and especially in the South Pacific. And uh, and I happened to, when I went into the Navy, I happened to work with a lot of old salts, which was good. It was my, uh, and then when I went into the fire department, uh, a lot of WW2 guys, <laughs> you know, and that was completely different. There was... Everything was wide open, you know. But they were all married. Excuse me, out of 26 men, I think two were single. And they were younger, but the rest were married. You know, and there was no such a thing as, I remember we had Keith. And uh, I said to the, I was talking to the officer. I said, you know, my wife's going to have a baby. And this man had nine children, right? Man. So he said, so? <laughs> uh, and uh, he says, is there anything wrong, you know, with the wife? Is there a problem? Anything that we would have to take care of you? And, uh, no. He says, all right, so what's, what's the story? <laughs> you have kids, you know? And a lot of them had nine kids and six kids. And, and uh, you know, you got a lot of education that way, how to handle things, you know? So but, any of that, like with you saying that you didn't see your dad for the whole time during World War II, did that... Well, once. I remember seeing him once in uniform. But growing up like that, did that change any way how you were a father to Keith? Great question. Uh, I try to be more... Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I imagine it would be. Uh, I always try to be in his... Uh, when he was younger, when Keith was younger, 
he uh, he he was with me a lot of times with my father. We used to go fishing. Oh, and, yeah. uh, he was the brunt of everything. He, oh, yeah. Anything went wrong, it was oh, yeah. Keith's fault. And, I'm uh, still going to therapy. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. And, uh, I Twice a week, by the way. I just remember, the, uh, remember the, the uh, phonograph needle, right? We was, so he was a chatty kid. Oh, imagine that. And, uh, and we were sitting in the car, and my father said, what the hell did he get? Invaccinated with a phonograph needle? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. You know, you know, uh, t -t 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 the phonograph needle. Yeah. So the, the director wants to hear about the phonograph needle. Was that the one, was that the time that I got threatened to throw? Or was I actually thrown off the boat? Or did I think I was thrown? How off. Which time are you talking uh, yeah, about? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, so at, at one point in my life, I wouldn't shut up. Go figure. No, and, I, it was and, nice. It was just a chatty kid. And my grandfather said. Son, when they vaccinated you, they used a phonograph needle instead of a hypodermic needle. And shut the, I don't think he used the F word, but it was awfully close to that at that end of it. Um, but that's 100% right. I don't right. ever remember the F word used in my no, house. No, no, no. Ever at all. Never, never, never did. I, I mean, think, uh, I think the first time I heard it may have been mom, but that's a different story. Yeah, well, <laughs> you probably. It's, I started it. You my, pulled the my, string. My mother once that. threatened to iron my face yeah. and meant it. But. Uh, you know, um, you this know. is a Father's Day special, guys, here of Real Talk. That's why four fathers over a bourbon and a cup of coffee are having some fun this and morning. And I think I need more bourbon and put my eyeglasses on. The, the bottle's over there. Yeah, and that is thank you to our one of our wonderful sponsors. Woody Fincham. Woody Fincham. Fincham and Associates, thank you kindly for that Buffalo Trace. So, Pop, talk to us about the, uh, the relationship you have with, with uh, not only Keith, but Yona. Um, and how close your whole family is. You guys live in the same the same neighborhood. Three miles away from three each other. Three miles away from each other. And walk us through the uh, experience of, of working together and then living three miles away from each other. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it we so, so, we had, so, so on the way in, I said, look, you know, if you don't want to talk about a topic, we joke around and say, hey, what about them Mets? Right? So, hey, what about them Mets, Bob? No, I... <laughs> what about those Mets? Uh, Yona is a home run. Yona is a home run. Home run. Uh, we uh, we at where we lived in Levittown, Long Island. We had a, every Fourth of July. We had a, a block party. I, I guess you guys all know about that. And uh, Yona had come, right? She was in. Yeah. We had our neighbors <laughs> put a big sign up, "Welcome Yona." We never seen Yona before, and uh, I guess. She never was. Was she in the U.S. before that? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. But we want to talk about that. Okay. So. How about uh, them Mets? How about them Mets? <laughs> yeah. Something and, uh, about a conception or not may have happened at that particular time. Anyway. <laughs> Whoa. It's a Father's Day special, Whoa. right? <laughs> it's kind of how it works, right, gentlemen? <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> so we greeted her in the traditional American way. Everybody's all the kids and. But Levittown used to be full of kids and dogs and, and, and you know, a lot of W-2 uh, vets there and they raised their family. And uh, she come in and she was good, you know, she worked her way. But we were in the house and uh, we were going to eat. So I said, all right, we're going to have some chow, chow down, you know. And uh, that would be food, she folks. didn't know what I meant. <laughs> she had you no know? clue. So, but so, anyway, that uh, great home run. Yona home run, you know. So one of the takeaways, Kerry, that I had growing up was even though Dad was working, two, you were always working two or three jobs, right? Absolutely. Right, and on the fire department, you would pull in 48, 72-hour shifts. He always made time for me. How much time do you spend with your kids, buddy? I try as much as possible. Um, and we're different era, so my wife and I both work full time. Sure. Um, so during the regular day, like, well, right now we get a lot more time because our baby's not sleeping that well. Um, That's a whole different time. A whole though, different thing. But normally we try to get at least an hour of time together with the family. Everybody eats breakfast together uh, and then send them off to daycare. And when we get home, we get a good two, three hours hanging out with the kids. Uh, trying to be really good about leaving the phone on the charger off sure. to the side and just fully focusing on them. I'm not as great as I would like to be. Uh, but then when it comes to the weekends, um, taking the kids out for long family walks. You know, if it's rainy outside, we all snuggle up and, yeah watch a movie. So I, 
as busy as I can be with the nonprofits, with my real job that actually pays the bills too, um, I try to do as much as I can with our daughters. Because uh, you're hearing stories like that, you know, or two, like not seeing your child for that long. Like, yes, there's certain weekends where my wife and I are very happy to not see our children for a weekend. Sure. Um, I can't imagine going longer than like two, three days and not seeing my kiddos and getting a hug. So you, you uh, I'll get a little philosophical here and pop jump in because you have much more experience than I do. At getting philosophical? No. Or being a father? I was going to say thinking, but I decided. Anytime Keith says I'm getting philosophical, I get a little nervous. Yeah, yeah. I get a little nervous. I was going to say. His glass is empty, so he could get real uh, philosophical. Yeah, really. That's and true. And it wasn't enough to get philosophical, by the way. It was just the taste. But uh, the director may or may not bring more, more bourbon over here for us to drink. That was a subtle hint. That, that was a subtle hint. Uh, but, you know, uh, at my age, right, so the part of what I wanted to do here today, right, is... Um, young dad, right? You know, Jer Jerry, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're only kind of into us in <laughs> year number, year number, year number three. Our little boy, no, our little boy's four and change. Four, I but we're it. very, very young in the game, game. Uh, very new uh, to the game. Yeah, and um, uh, just, just, a, just, a, just a taste, Mr. Director. I mean, uh, go, go studio cam so people can see you <laughs> fill it. Go, go ahead, uh, Keith Smith. Finish your thought there. Yeah, so um, it's funny because, you know, at my age of 60 or almost 60 with 30-something and 20-something because I won't name the age because I can't. Thank you, sir. Just, just, just a tad, just a tad. The, more than enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the, uh, you start thinking to yourself. You start thinking to yourself, gentlemen, you know, did I make the right calls, right? Thank you. Did I, did, I, did I spend the right amount of time and all that kind of great stuff? And it's just, it's kind of normal. I, we've been, this is where we're at in our lives. We're thinking that right now Go on, that, on that end of it. And um, so the reality of it is when they pick up the phone and call you and say, hey, Dad, thanks for when you did this. And I'm going to do this right now. Hey, Dad, thanks all those times you took me out fishing. Man used to take me out of school. How freaking oh, cool man. is that? That's cool. That's a used hero. To, That's used a to, hero. He used to take me out of school to go yeah. fishing. Now, I got abused like freaking crazy on it, right? You know, I was, the, whatever went wrong, it was my fault. It, it was. Right? Yeah. Whatever went wrong, it was my fault. But just, you know, from my perspective, when I look back growing up, the time that you spent with me was just off the charts, right? And, and I got lucky, you know. Where's Keith? He's out fishing. He's not in school. And, and told the teacher, hey, I'm taking him fishing. That's great. <laughs> you That's got great. A if you got a problem with that, we're going fishing. So, well, Thank was, you, Bob. It was at different times. You know, you had, I did it with my kids. You didn't have a lot of time. You, know, you didn't have a lot of time. Like uh, Keith said, that we, we worked two, three jobs, whatever we could do to make everything a little better. You know, we were basically cliff dwellers as or apartment people. Uh, only the rich people in our family had homes and a car, you know, what we used to call them rich, but they, it, it wasn't a, you know, it wasn't, the whole life was different, was different. And, uh, you know, your father's coming home. Everybody make sure your father, you know, is coming home. And then if I, uh, I'm home and uh, I uh, had a busy night or something, especially in the fire. Don't wake your father up. Oh know? my God! Don't, Don't go wake there. your father up. You know, oh. because it, you know we we sorry to say, or I guess, or good to say, whatever we were where I work was very 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 busy. Uh, and it, how many runs? How many runs a year you used to do? Four thousand? Uh, five thousand? Yeah, five to six thousand. Run fires, man. Yeah, well, they're not all fires. I mean, you would... Uh, How many active fires? You would rescue, too. You would pretty much anything you well, went to... Well, not only that, one, in my truck company was uh, occupied, what they call occupied structural workers. Uh, we had quite a few. And that was in the transition of the neighborhoods. The neighborhoods were changing. The population was changing. My wife and I, Tina... Hi, Tina. My wife and, my wife and Good I. Good move, Dad. We used to. Uh, cheers, Pop. We kept company. Cheers, Tina. Cheers, Tina. Cheers, yeah. cheers, cheers, cheers. To the cheers. Cheers. We kept company, and I remember we uh, we she had come from the neighborhood of Bushwick, Brooklyn, where 
we we were courting, and we come home for the movie or something. Walk, go down, sit on a stool, go across the street, and get a container of beer and a salami hero or hoagie, whatever you call. It. Sit on a stoop, one, two o'clock in the morning, and just you couldn't do that. We when I left that place, it was like. <laughs> well, they call it the war years for a reason. Yeah, the, there was it a was, couple uh, of decades of the war years. Similar to what you see in Ukraine. To, to, it was. Just amazing how that, and I guess. But I'm, the neighborhoods really turned. Brooklyn has become pretty and. Green. Brooklyn's uh, great. It's, it's great. It's posh. Somebody, somebody really wants to take a look at what it was like in the '60s and the '70s and the early. Just Google it, and um, it, it's 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 a it's amazing. And it, it is it really, and you don't really realize a lot of it till you kind of let get out of it, you know. And uh, yeah, I remember that. I remember this, you know. Uh, but. Uh, the, you know, they, there's a statement somewhere. I can't. I read it. Said that one out of one out of four people in the United States can trace somewhere back to Brooklyn in oh, yeah. their family. One out of four. That's that's quite a bit. You know, uh, I didn't even talk about Brooklyn, but I should talk about Brooklyn because we just had Flag Day. Flag Day used to be called Brooklyn Day, uh, also, and the. Uh, Diocese of uh, Brooklyn used to give the kids off. You know, we uh, went to parochial school, and uh, <laughs> the it, it was just just different, different, different times, different times. Uh, Kerry, what what have you learned about yourself by being a dad with two little little people in your world? What have you learned? What 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 have you learned about yourself that you did not know about? What's your, how old is your oldest? Uh, two years, five months. What have you What have you learned about yourself three years ago to now? I really like my time. I've, oh. I used to. So there's a topic that we're going to be talking about later. Uh, I feel like with being a father now, I moved from being selfish to selfless, um, realizing that yes, while in a relationship with my wife and everything, you're not being selfish at that time. But like my time was my time, and now my time is my kids' time as well. And when I first started being a dad, it was I, I would get angry about that a little bit. Um, but now realizing that you just asked how much time I'm spending with my kids, it, now I'm happy to do it. It's like sure. my time that I used for riding the motorcycle, doing other things, going out with the guys. Now I see it as more of an investment in my daughters in the future. Um, and I'm going to mirror it back to you. Uh, so you did rescue, dangerous fire stuff. You did crazy off the books stuff in the Marine Corps. Yeah. Did you go that way because of the awesome, dangerous example? No, no, I wanted to be as far away from him as possible. <laughs> That's what 18-year-olds and 19 are supposed to do. And let's, uh, say, let's hi, say hi to a great dad, yeah. Frank Rock. Ah, oh, Papa Rock hey, watching Pop. the program right now. Carrie's dad and mom are watching from California. They say this is a great show. Heather Bangley is commenting with Frank Rock in the comment section, and Sarah Rock's got the heart emojis all over the screen right here. Um, so you, the viewer and listener, can shape the conversation by offering perspective, and we'll relay it on, on air. This is a great point. So do you think you pursued, I don't want to call it adrenaline, but like high risk, dangerous because of pop? No. No. Because uh, what you chose to do in the Marine Corps isn't the so traditional. I didn't, get, I didn't get to choose it. Okay. okay. But you chose to go into the Marine Corps. I chose to go into the Marine Corps, and I remember that, right? I remember you, you and I, uh, I decided to, uh, to attempt college. And hmm. the word attempt. I tried that for a week. Uh, oh, I did much better than you. I did it for a semester. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Congratulations hey, well on that. Alfred that University. Alfred University, 18-year-olds and green alcohol that you could buy legally all day long. Did not mix. Nah. Uh, so I talked to Pop, and I said, I, I remember this like it was yesterday. Um, I actually, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't, uh, with, I, I love the Army. I love, I love, you know, this is coming from a place of love. So I sat down with Pop, and I said, look, they... Um, they offered me um, rescue, uh, 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 dive, uh, res uh, dive, 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 I can do this, Smith, um, a rescue diver in the Navy, or actually an MP as a cop. Yeah. So I wanted to be a cop as a kid growing up. Okay. That's, that's what I always no, wanted to be. A cop and an MP are completely different. 
Uh, no, 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 not in the Marine Corps. We'll have to change that up a little bit. Okay. There's, there's okay. two. There's two different cops, right? There's the, the you know, we were actually law enforcement. Uh, okay, uh, Army MPs then. then Army MPs is very, very different. But anyway, make make a long story short. So I asked Papa. I said, "This is what I want to do." Da, 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 da. And he said, oh, "If you're going to do that, son, go to the best." And I went to the best. I listened to what he said. Instead of the Navy, I went into the Marine Corps. Um, and it's interesting, um, I, if Yvonne is watching, I wrote her a letter. So my, our, his granddaughter, my daughter, which I cannot remember her age. I got her name right, though. So that's, that's, that's got to count for something. Uh, it's a Division One athlete, former Division One athlete. And she couldn't get into um, uh, her cho choice school, which was... Uh, JMU. She ended up going to Radford University for, on a swimming scholarship. I mean, it's still a great school. Still a great school. But she was pissed about it. And I said, look, you know, I wrote this letter, and the premise of the letter was, is, uh, you know, God, karma, whatever you believe in, if it doesn't, and this is what I learned in the military and learned from living with, with Pop, you know, if you don't get, if this is not what you want to do, walk whatever that path is at 110%, because you never know where that's going to go. So I actually went in the Marine Corps and didn't know I got chosen, right out of boot camp, I got chosen for this duty. I had no clue that that was going to happen. Went through, went through uh, MP school in San Antonio, graduated number one, back in the Corps at that point. If you go to, if you graduate number one, you get to pick your duty station. So I picked Irukuni, Japan. They sent me back to Paris Island, South Carolina. Right? Oh. So those who are Marines understand what it is after you leave that for three months, they get sent back there. Like, I know there's no SCC rules, but I won't say the F word. <laughs> but, but that's what I was thinking. What the F did I just do? But I didn't know I got selected for this duty. Uh, got sent to, found out, got sent to the school, went to Langley, went to FBI Academy, yada, yada, yada. Went overseas, graduated number one, and uh, I picked Kathmandu. Because... You know, that just, just seems cool. I, I said, yeah. how cool is that's, that? That's hey, you're, you're 20 at this point now, right? Uh, 19, After training? 19-ish, 20-ish, 19, 19 and a half. Yeah, 19, Not, 20, you, if you're a kid like that age, it's, honestly, you're a kid at that point He's still. a kid. Uh, no, hey, you get a chance to go to Kathmandu, you're going to do that. I still think I'm a kid, but anyway, but Kathmandu. I, <laughs> uh, you're still a kid. I was, I was listening to Bob Seger's song, and I said, that's where I want to go. <laughs> And sent me to Sofia, Bulgaria, behind the Iron Curtain, <laughs> which was not on the effing list, had nothing to but do with... But you had first pick. Yeah. You so, think you do. So, so Is well, that what it was? Oh, and, they, and then they said you don't get that's, to pick? That's exactly the way that's that... That's exactly the way that... Yeah. Really? Wow. You were told what to do. Yeah. So you go to Bulgaria, and, and it's, it's serendipitous. Because so you I did not know this. Out of boot camp, I got selected to go there. They, they selected me to do this, and I had no clue what this was going to happen until I went, oh. And so the story is, is you know, I told to Yvonne, I said, look, if I didn't do that and meet, you, meet Yona, my wife, in Sofia, Bulgaria, you wouldn't be born. So the, 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 the lesson I learned from my father was whatever path is put in front of you, walk it out at 110%, at 100% effort, um, uh, and, you know. That's just with most people, yeah. And then, and then it'll work out okay. So it's interesting. You were told to go into the Navy. You wanted to go into the military, and he supported it. I completely hid it from my family for the first week. This is a story. So I uh, hid it. Got out of high school. Great you realized that, that. Oh, okay. Was they that, know this well, story. Well, they know now. They, oh, yeah. They, well, they, they know this. Obviously. Yeah. The, uh, Pop Frank, Rock and Mom so Rock so remember, I'm a Marine. Anything above this gets a little different. Frank is watching right now. <laughs> but no, I, uh, I tried applying for community college because my parents came to me one day in summer and I was just watching TV and I had a job working for a community theater. Uh, my parents came to me like, we love you, but you need to do something. Uh, it's either get a real job, like a full-time job, or go to school. And if you go to school, you can live rent-free. We'll help you out how we can. Um, and we weren't you know, financially great at that point. I knew my parents weren't going to be able to pay for college. So I looked at it half-heartedly um, and then randomly was up at my neighbor's house I'd known him for six years, never knew he was in the Army. He's like, hey, I, he was running an insurance company. He's like, I've got an opening in the mailroom. I'll give you the job starting at $11. And that's at 11 big and bucks back then. Back in 2000. Yeah, which I'm like, bucks. oh my God, I'm going to be rich. Um, he's like, you have to go speak to a military recruiter. First. Yeah. He's Good like, you. all you have to do is listen to the spiel. As long as you do that, you can have the job. Uh, went down and actually tried to apply for the Air Force. 
because I'd always heard that was the easiest, most cush one. Um, anybody out there listening that says different, I don't care. Um, <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story about that. But we'll ahead. get there. Um, but so the only person in the recruiting office at that point was the Army officer, uh, Sergeant First Class Steele. And he looked every bit like the name itself. Um, and for a half hour, I was in there in his office. He didn't say a word about the Army. Like he was just wanting to know what I wanted to do, where I was going in life. And then that was a Sunday. And then a Monday I came back, and Tuesday came back, and then took the, uh, the ASVAB test. Got a 99 on it, and they're like, sure, you can do whatever you want. And this whole time, it's summertime, and my parents were going to work, and I was just like, hey, I'm just going to go hang out. I completely lied to them that I was going to the recruiting station for a week solid until I finally went to the MEP station, took the test, was offered the job that I wanted to go, and then at a pool party, I told my best friend, Garrett, who then told his mother, who's best friends with my mother. No way. And yeah, he ratted me out. That's second. how I got back to your uh, parents? And then that night, it was the girls were sent to their room, and for two hours. This is your sisters? Uh, yeah, Sarah okay. and Casey. How many brothers and sisters do you have? Two sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the middle. Sarah's child. watching right now. Oh, yeah. They got basically sent to their rooms while mom and dad yelled at me for two hours about why did I want to leave the family. Ooh. And it was rough. Um, but it was one of those where you say, like, when it feels right and you're just going to put on this path, it's like, Everything about that enlistment felt right. Um, How long did you serve? Uh, five years. I was stop lost for one year. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that conversation, it ended rough. Um, and then it was a car drive down to Anaheim with my mom that she understood where I was coming from. Um, really Casey's listening too. We got to okay. make sure Casey. We got the whole family. In Casey, there. hello. Um, I didn't forget you, Casey. I but feel it was like a I know you. Car ride with my mom and her realizing that she and my dad had raised me. To go our own way. They had grown three amazing independent young people and we're trying to go our own way. And the next day we had in a, a theater ceremony and she announced to everybody that Carrie was joining the army. Um, so that's interesting you should say that because um, one of the things that I remember that that we were always supported as kids growing up to not, not necessarily do your own thing. There was always guidance, right? Given by Absolutely. Pop, pop, and, pop and mom. But they did never said no, right? I mean, if, look, if it was, you know, hey, I'm going to jump off, to, I'm going to bungee jump off the Empire State Building, eh, you know, maybe yeah. not. But but we were always supported to chase our dreams and do what we had to do. And, and um, you know, and, and that's what, what I tried to instill in my children, and our children, I should say, growing up is, you know, give them support and all that stuff. And we were talking about it a little earlier, you know, you know, at this age, right, you don't really, you know, you think, you know, you hope you're doing the right thing. You're trying to do all this stuff. But sometimes, you know, you just kind of question yourself a oh, little bit. Daily. Um, daily. But you are. You as the dad. Well, you so try to impart daily your question wisdom myself. or your parents' wisdom on your children. You know, uh, like uh, <laughs> uh, Pop used to say. Clements uh, said, you know. The older I get, the smarter my father gets. Samuel yeah, Clemens. you know, and I that's found a, that too. That's tr true, you yeah. know. You know, you put your hand on it. Hey it's pop. Hurt. Hey pop. Hey pop. Maybe not all the time. Yeah. 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 No, but that's so true, yeah, pop. It is, yeah. yeah. Well, they try. You know, you. Everybody. My dad told me. He said, "Listen, everybody has to get their own black eyes. Everybody, and, and that you can put that any way you want. But uh, and he's right." He's you, right. you got to go in there and say, maybe I don't like this, or maybe this is stimulating, or whatever, you know, but you have to deal with that, you know. And as you grow up, when we grew up as kids, and, you know, you got a certain age, there was no debate about what's right or wrong. You know what's right or wrong. You know what you got to do. You know you have to be a good citizen. You know you got to be a good father or mother. You know, and it's this, it's just different today. I mean, we don't, we, we were never, how, how can I say that? We were never followed and say, don't do it when we were older. We got married and okay, you got it. You know, you never went back and say, Annie, hey, you know, you got it. You, this is the way you're supposed to handle it. You want to be a man, you be a man, you know, plain and simple. And uh, again, I was talk about that, but one, one of the things that I, uh, I think about a good father is a good wife. A good woman uh, just, just makes a good father. 
you know, yeah. just makes a good flog. You know. um, throw this to you, Pop. How has um, being a dad changed with age and experience as you've gotten older and you're now a, a great grandfather? Yeah. How has that perspective changed or evolved as you've gotten older? Well, <clears throat> simple when they when the problem comes up, <clears throat> usually you experience it somewhere in your life. And as long as it's not going to be threatening or, you know, it's not going to be uh, traumatic, you know, just, it'll work itself out, you know. And you, and you, I, I rely on Keith and Yona with, the, uh, with their children and, uh, and my other children the same way. You know, they, are, they make their decisions, right? And, uh, and hopefully they, they know enough to like their, consider their children and also their wife, you know. Father, father is uh, one of the problems today. I think is uh, the lack of fatherhood. You know, used to be, uh, you know, father was responsible for the family. Used to be everything, you know, and uh, you, you know abandonment and all that other stuff. That was that was charged. You were charged with that. If you, uh, we had many a many a. Fire, uh, where, we, where I worked was fully occupied at that time. And we had fires late at night and stuff like that. And God forbid there was, and there was some, some deaths. And uh, they want to know where the parents are. If the parents weren't there. If the parents weren't there, they want to know where were they, period. And they used to be charged, you know. Uh, and now that kind of family structure kind of changed somehow you know uh, it's uh, antiquated or I don't know but uh, but when, when things got tough you all got together and you all pulled together and you let the differences lay where they are you know it's uh, it's a little different a little different today uh, and you try to maintain that that family unit I think that's I think that's the b biggest thing, biggest support. And our country, we're, we're late on it, you know, family. And I'm sure there's ups and downs. You see marriages that, that you say, oh, that's, you make a decision that should have never happened and all that other stuff. But uh, you're not in there to judge everybody. You're trying to do the best you can. If that happened to them, they're not going to let it happen to you. That's, that's the way it is. We've got a lot of comments coming in from viewers and listeners. This wow. is from Kevin Higgins. This is his best memory of being a dad, or of his dad. Um, Kevin Thank Higgins, you. who's watching in Greenwood. The best memory of my dad, he says, my friend Jeff and I thought it was fun to ring doorbells and run. My pop found out about it. Our punishment was to dig holes with a manual post hole digger for a week in Virginia humidity. Our hands were blistered and bleeding. My dad measured every hole for depth and width, filling many holes and making us start over. Seven days later on the day, the lumber was being delivered to build the fence my dad met with Jeff and I at like 6 a.m. and told us, fill all the holes. There is no fence. Don't do it again. Best lesson I ever was given. I got a similar lesson to that, Kevin Higgins. Um, I was going into my senior year of high school and going to the welcome back dance and chose to take uh, my, the, the girl I was seeing at the time to the welcome back dance. Well, I had one too many um, beverages prior to the welcome back dance. And, in high school. In high school. And as I'm going to the welcome back dance, the teacher said, no, you can't go to the welcome back dance. You can barely stand up. So the welcome back dance did not happen. I ended up going back to my buddy's house, needed to take a little nap <laughs> at my buddy's house. I wake up to my parents at my buddy's house, shaking me to wake me up, my dad looming over me. Ooh. Long story short, the next morning I was up at 5.30 in the morning to chop and stack wood. Chopped and stacked wood for the entire day, incredibly hungover, a, a lesson well learned from my dad. We still talk about that to this day. Kerry, did you have one of those stories? Because I've got one. Oh, shit, why not? <laughs> <laughs> hey, your dad 
that is why. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> this was where it was. My mother was my saving grace. Uh, so I actually, there was only like two times I drank during high school. Um, and it was the first time I had tequila. It was a sleepover at the guy's house. Um, and I got drunk off tequila. And the thing is, I was working at that theater that I told you about. Um, I had to be at work the next day. But now Sunday tradition was dad sat in his big comfy chair and he read the LA Times from front to back, the Sunday edition. So he wrote the ads, he read the lifestyle, he read all the news, everything. Um, but all of us would then be watching Sunday shows or whatever. The whole family unit was in the living room together. Well, I got dropped off by my friends from this night of drinking at like eight in the morning, which obviously if you've ever drank before, you still smell like it yeah. the next day. I had not experienced this. I didn't know this happened. So I just you know walked stuck. in the door. <laughs> No, I didn't. I was still probably a little drunk, um, but I walked in the door and I just sat in Dad's chair, ah, ah, and then was just eating donuts. And everyone in the room is just staring at me, like, "Oh, what's my going God. on?" And then my dad just looks up, like, "Have you been drinking?" <laughs> no. Did he, did he smell it on you? Oh yeah, everybody in the room smelled it on me. Um, I'm like, "No, no, of course not." And then he pushes, like, "You sure you haven't been drinking?" I'm like, "Okay, well, I maybe had one." And you could just see he was boiling and boiling and boiling. And then, you know, me being me, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to take this. I'm going to go to my room and relax. <laughs> and my mom walks in with a big old glass of water and a bunch of ibuprofen. She's like, you're not the first guy I've seen that has had a little too much. Your dad's extremely angry, but I've talked to him on one condition. This is the first time. I'm like, yes, I've never drank before. This is what happens. like, okay, how do you feel? Horrible. Cool. You still have to go to work. <laughs> so my punishment was we all went to the theater together because uh, family performed. I worked at the theater. So, yeah, I uh, had to go and work hungover, and that was my penance. We didn't have chopping wood in Southern California. <laughs> well, um, you had a form of it. Yeah. And we had a form of it, labor and whatnot. Yeah. Penance? Yeah. That, that's, you were Catholic? Oh, goodness, no. Uh, Frank Rock <laughs> says. Goodness, no. <laughs> Frank, his father, is watching. He said Carrie was 12 when he told me during a conversation to please let him make his own mistakes and decisions. Oh. 12 well, years old. Well and done. Heather Bangley is watching the program, and she is curious about your Air Force story that you alluded to earlier. Oh, in the show. yeah. So um, uh, uh, if I can tell my drinking stories, and we can kind of wrap, wrap it around, because this involved this man to my right ear. Um, uh, when I decided to drink that whole bottle of Jim Beam, I think I was like 14 or 15. Or That's not a good decision even when you're 30. It was not a good decision. <laughs> or 80. Carrie, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're not talking about decisions here. We're talking about stories. I, I, I'm out. I'm no, out. Ju <laughs> no, no judging. Lee Elberson is giving Pop some props and some love. And he Another says, Marine. I second Leonard's sentiment for the power of the family structure. Oh, yeah. And he said that was a great take from Leonard. That's from Lee Elberson. Leonard. Finish your, finish Leonard. your thought. Yeah, your, your Air oh, Force. Oh, Leonard. Look at that, huh? Leonard. <laughs> Quite distinguished. You're getting props from the viewers and listeners. They love Leonard. you. Leonard. You might have to build a show around We're going to build a. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Bourbon with pop. There you go. I like it. Finish your story. So um, I'm only recently, and thank you to to uh, Woody Fincham, I'm only recently starting to be able to sip bourbon because when I was 14 or 15 years old, my so-called friends decided that we were going to drink a whole bottle of bourbon. And very long story. Got left in a snow bank. Some guy dropped me off. That's right. It was winter. It was winter. Um, so at the time... Dad was a marathon runner, right? You were running marathons and long distance, and you. Well, were I was a runner. Yeah, I was. Job, but you, yeah. you were training firemen to run long distance. Right. For yeah, aerobic exercises. Aerobic exercises, and uh, so I got up, went, you know, the next morning, uh, which I don't remember any of this. Um, I never got yelled at. I never got preached at. I got told to put on my running shorts my sneakers and my thing, and we ran like eight or nine miles that day along Wantor Parkway, I remember it like, and I was throwing up and doing every step, so uh, I learned my lesson. I, we, he made me run, never, he never chastised me, never said, don't ever do this again, but 
I ran that run and I realized, and until just recently, I've never been able to actually smell bourbon. So, but Woody has corrected me of that. The Buffalo <laughs> Trace. Of, of that, of that problem. So what about the Air Force, though? Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to go into the Air Force. I've just been trying not. I'm, I'm Heather just, Bagley wants yeah, to hear yeah, the story. Yeah, yeah. Mother of four, Heather. Mother Bagley. of yeah. four. So, um, Mother. love you, Heather. Heath Forbes also watching the show, giving you some props. So, you know, everybody gives the Air Force a hard time. As they should. <laughs> Except. This lives on the internet forever, Kerry. This lives on the internet forever. Hey, they were badasses in World War II because it was the only way we could deliver nuclear munitions. But yeah, but technically, they were in the Army at that time. They were not they even the Army Air, Air Corps, correct. Army Air Corps. They were part of the Army at that particular point in time. Um, so we did a little training with Air Force Pararescue. And so you're a Marine. Oh, you got multiple Air Force people on the feed right now. Finish uh, your story. Uh, you, <laughs> you are a Marine. You're maybe a year out of boot camp. You know, uh, it's kind of like your Ranger. Did you go to Ranger school? Did you want no. to Airborne? You went to Airborne, yeah. Airborne, right. So, you know, bullets bounce off of you, right? You know, you, I'm great, you suck, you know, all that kind of great stuff. And you come out of that. And so what we did is we had to train with the Air Force Power Rescue in Lackland Air Force Base because we were only five guys, six guys in charge of 450 U.S. souls. So what the Power Rescue is really good at is, is going in and getting you, taking care of you, and getting you out in hostile territory, right? That's what they're freaking awesome at in doing that. So we went to PT with them. We went to train with them. We went to run with them. And then I realized, oops, <laughs> oh, well, they push through the ringer. Oh my God, dog dust. So um, you know, it's not all air. You know, what do they call it? Chair force. You know, you, the power rescue guys and the forward observers. It's pretty high speed guys or gals. But uh, yeah, so that's the story. You know, I, I we walked in there. We were four or five guys thinking that we were uh, we were all that and 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 a bag of chips ball put together, <laughs> and then went oops and uh, dogged us. And anyway, but some of them are, are dear friends to this day, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So I got a question that's burning, and it's for everybody at the table. Okay, know, Jerry and I, same generation, dads, slightly older, very much older. slightly older. <laughs> nice job, nice job, buddy. How'd you get around that? Hey, you know Buffalo Trace makes you. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 oh. yeah, 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 yeah. Show's over. Nice show. <laughs> when. Did you think you were ready to be a dad? Oh, that's a tough one. Do you ever were think you ever ready? ready? Did you have a point where it's like, okay, I'm ready to be a dad? I never even thought about yeah, it. Yeah, ditto. Never even thought about it. It just you know, happened. It's, it's, you, you yeah. f part of falling in love is the physical part of it, and uh, we got back. You know, I never even I knew that was going to come. You know, family, whatever, and. Uh, and then once you were there, then you had to do what you had to do. You know, you were you were responsible for your actions, and uh, you know it was a mutual thing. And it's we got pregnant on our honeymoon. Came back from our honeymoon in Hawaii. It's like I'm not feeling so great. So we didn't get pregnant. Well, my wife got, <laughs> got pregnant. Got pregnant. <laughs> I mean, my wife. We participated in. My it. wife did all the work. <laughs> Heather Heather Bangley says she loves you, Carrie Rock. Oh, my God. wife did all the work. We came back from Hawaii. After literally being married for like three days, four days, and she's like, I don't feel so good. And then she's like, you know, I don't, I don't think this is me going to the doctor. I don't think I need to buy something at the drugstore. No. And she came back with the pregnancy kit, left it on the counter of the bathroom, and I was like, okay, here we go. Apparently, was that a goal for you guys? Did you speak about, speak about that beforehand? We, we pulled the goalie um, okay. on our honeymoon. You know, we pulled the goalie, so it was an empty net. So we thought it was, uh, we thought it, it could happen. There's a mental picture. I really pregnant. did not want to happen. We thought getting pregnant could happen. <laughs> did we think it was going to happen that quickly? No, because usually you would want a little bit of transition time between just getting married to being parents. Because that takes, I mean, wouldn't we all agree here, that takes the relationship to a completely different level? I when there's a kid in there and then you're responsible for this kid, you but know, Colleen like, and I had that conversation. A different level of stress. So, the, so how old were you when you became a first father first time? 37. Yeah, I think I was, uh, so what am I, 30, 36. And how old were you, Pop? 20 something? Come on. Come on. You need to do math? Or? Well, let's You need, you need we, some help? We got fingers yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to remember. You were a young man. Uh, 20, well, I was at his, I was 21. 
That's a young man. So we I married at 22. Yeah. I was 22. My wife was 20. Tina, my wife, was 20. And I but was that was every that was part of being. Well, you got married. You were supposed to have children. I mean, right. it was kind of like a social thing, and, and uh, the uh, the combination of the marriage produced children. And so I was 23. And when you had when you had your daughter, mm -hmm. yeah, and I, it, it, and then that was we were learning. It was you know, yeah, you know, you try to approach it a little more with a little sense and stuff. That was you were there. You had to make it work, you know. I mean, because at 21, 23... Oh, I was not mature enough right. to be an adult. Twenty one, twenty three. I, mean, I a could. Parent. Well, yeah, I could barely get it. <laughs> I could barely. Well, like, you were in a generation where it's like you guys just made it happen. You understood you had a responsibility. Yeah. But so, and you but took but it. There's all the fathers. But, but, no matter whether you're 37, 21, or forty five, you you have that. You know, but, you just. You say, wow. Why do you think it's happening later now? Why is marriage oh, happening great, later now? And why is parenthood happening later now? Is this an affordability? Yeah, thank you, Keith. Thank you. Is this an affordability issue? or well, is That this, was uh, never even thought about. The affordability? Never. I never thought, thought about, about it. Okay. I mean, we think it. Do you think about that? Oh, God. I see what I pay for child care. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like 30000 Dude, it's obscene. How, how much is that number? Thir uh, at the end of the year with two kids in daycare. I will have paid thirty thousand dollars for daycare. My kid is in a summer camp right now for one week. It's one week, eight thirty to thirty. Hmm. It's like five fifty a week. Well, Harry, my well, that son. was never even we, we, that was unaffordable. Yeah, we, but okay. So when you had your kids, where were your family? Where was my? Where was your dad, your mom? Did they live in? Well, the same my mother-in-law used to help out. Uh, so you were fortunate. So that's well. The difference. Not that's really. The, she the, lived, you know, a good distance. And uh, what's a good distance? Because we don't have any family she, around. She lived in uh, Brooklyn. We lived in Queens. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I wish we had the studio. <laughs> <laughs> but so to Jerry and I's point, like my family is all in California. Yeah. Colleen's family is all in Colorado. Uh, so yeah, raising our kids, it's it's not that we're alone per se. They're all our whole family. Like we do Zoom it's, calls. It's funny you should say that because our kids, are, grandkids, are up in Connecticut, right? And and. We're like, oh, by the way, Jerry, I'm going to be gone a week in, in July. Again? <laughs> hates, Again? This Good dude seat. hates it when I leave. But this guy leaves Harry, more than anyone I know. I got this seat when I'm gone. Oh, All right. He, All right. He could definitely fill it. But, but we, we were like, ah, you know, we need to go away and spend a little bit of time together. And we're focusing, no, we want to go up and spend the week and help the kids out. My daughter out and and son-in-law out so they can go do a little couple of things and we'll watch the kids for and that is so appreciated by the parents in oh the absolutely because i don't have any neither my wife nor i have any family in the area you know her family's on long island my family is spread all over the country and it is it can be isolating and, sure. and lonely you know and, yeah. and to carrie's point child care I mean, the sitters now are asking like 17 50 20 bucks an hour. We pay ours 20 just so we can reserve them. 20 bucks an hour. Yeah. So you go out on a date, you want to take her somewhere hey, nice. Carrie, 19 bucks. I'll do it. 19 bucks. You don't want this guy watching your two daughters. I mean, yeah. I might end up with a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> I know, you might <laughs> They'll learn how to drink. Or there'll be less whiskey in the house. I mean, but, now, now, Keith, you've got a date. You're going to drop what on a date? 150 easy 150 bucks, right? What'd you say? Well, we talked about that. We brought, I took uh, Harry, my son-in-law, my wife, uh, my wife and, my, and my daughter out for dinner. We were up there a couple of weeks ago. You know, for a steak dinner, we dropped six bills plus 25, 25 bucks an hour for a, for a babysitter. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So going out now, I mean, that particular case cost you almost, what, 800 bucks? Yeah. With the child care. And I'm still twitching. Thanks, pal. <laughs> so <laughs> it, that, was, it was completely different. Okay, yeah. how so? How so? How so? There was no babysitting. You yeah. would have, uh, you know, that would be a rare thing. Going out to dinner was like you had to get dressed. They wear a tie, and it was a big thing. And you took the kids. We took. <laughs> we took. Are you going to tell that story? <laughs> no, we took. Uh, at that time, we had two children, uh, Kellyanne and Keith, and we took the kids everywhere we went. Yeah. I shouldn't say everywhere. That's not. But mostly all the time. And they, what the good part of it was, they learned to conduct themselves. If you were out in, uh, <laughs> if you were out in a restaurant. That may or may no, not be true, folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you, yeah. Well, we went, we. 
We very, very, I can, I can, li I can literally count. Let's just call it most of the time. I can you literally are, count on one hand, because we just never had the money to do it, right. right? I can remember on one hand that we went out as, for dinner as a family. But it, it, and the only, I thought you were going to tell the story was, is because I've always had a little bit of expensive taste, right? Well, and, and we went out that's for- That's next. That we went out for a dinner as a family, and you know me being the knucklehead that I am, you know everybody's kind of trying to be, you know, look at the menu and, and order something that's. We a little we had an anniversary, and uh, we lived on Long Island, and we loved Eastern Long Island, especially on the North Shore. And oh, uh, uh, Claudio's, yeah, Claudio's, yeah. And uh, very very nice and stuff like that. So we we. Uh, we did everything together. We, we even took the dog at the time, except for the, the restaurant. And uh, there was rarely, I mean, rarely did we ever babysit a bit. But we went out on our anniversary, we took the kids with us. We were going out to eat in this Claudio's, you know, it's a sea uh, uh, thing. And, uh, I've been to Claudio's. Yeah, and, and we were worried about the money, you know, we're sitting there. And <laughs> naturally, I says, okay, we're looking at the menu. We're watching what you're going to order, you know. And we kind of taught the kids how to conduct themselves. You know, if you order for yourself and stuff, that was all part of it. They were in that mix where they picked up a certain protocol that they deal with, you know, not running under the table or pulling on, you know, they were how to conduct themselves correctly. So... <laughs> So we're looking at the menu, and we, you know, and uh, this, so this is a, this is a seafood slash steakhouse. Now, how old are you at this point? Oh, I don't know. Oh my God! So it was just Kelly and I, right? Yeah. It was, so, so it had to be ten, ten years old, 10 years eleven old. years old, something like that. Keith yeah. has three brothers and sisters. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. only two at the time. Right. We we there's twelve years difference between yeah. good Keith. Catholic, by the way, good Catholic Keith family. and the youngest, <laughs> their youngest daughter. The youngest, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. So anyway, make a long story short, the uh, we're going. You would, you would, uh, Tina and I were looking at the order sort of thing, and Kelly too. Big boy here takes the topless steak. Steak was it? Oh, I did a surf and turf. Surf and turf. <laughs> that was it. And and you know, now I'm not going to try to make a scene. You know, you know, and I figured, I, all right, I got it covered. I, got I totally, some, I got some. I some, totally disregarded was, this whole uh, money. There was no, we didn't use, we didn't use credit cards. The first time we used a credit card, we took a trip to Florida, right? And we wanted to, we, we, we I wasn't expand around. I was ourselves. In, I was in the core at that time. Yeah, and that that's when I got a credit card. But when Tina and I. Moved out to uh, Happy Valley, Levittown. We uh, had a handyman special. Worked. Just need a lot of work. I guess that's how I got into building and stuff. And uh, we didn't go away for five years. That, nothing. I don't think we went out to eat. Everything was so... And we, we survived. You know, the kids survived. Uh, and we went out. I remember the... Uh, the Pocono, uh, we went out. Is that where the duck chased me? No, that was later. <laughs> There's a whole thing about a duck. There's a duck involved in this. We went to a, a resort in the Poconos. Pocono Rest, I think it was. And, you know, you came down and sit at the table. You, were, you always had it, and then Tina would always make sure you were, you know, get yourself straightened out and everything. And uh, there was a German couple that was behind us, and they mentioned to my wife, uh, Tina, how well the kids behaved you know uh, and we just we just had spent some time in uh, Cape Charles this weekend and we went to this oyster farm and the families were there with their families and there were kids all over the place running around the, the waitresses were going crazy you know uh, loud it was nice it was nothing bad that happened there but that would be not tolerated in they would come over and say, "Please control your children," you know. Uh, and of gotta course, talk it to the mic, Bob. That's huh? the mic. Got to talk to the mic. That's the reason why the mic is there. <laughs> just want to let you know. You but, just want to let you know, Bob. The mic. The mic. Yeah. The, Alex uh, Irby says, "Same here, Pop. I'm always grateful to my parents for having taught us as children 
how to conduct ourselves and converse with adults, even at a younger age. So it's interesting you guys should say that because that was I was uh, preparing for the show and I was talking to both my daughters and I, I said uh, um, we're very we're very unique. Um, my children grew up with my mother and father. Right, they were always with my mother and father. They were always with that. They actually to the point that I'm getting a little bit, little bit worried about it because they won't call me, but they'll call him and talk to him on that. And Tina. And Tina, and Tina my, and my, and my mother. But I asked them the other day. I said, you know, what's one of the best things that, that, that you learn from us, right? What, what's your takeaway? And uh, so Yvonne was our first child, first person in the Smith family, our family, to go to college. Right, and first one yeah. ever to go to university. Oh, we, you guys went to college, you just yeah, yeah. never okay. made it. Okay. <laughs> well, let's, let's rephrase that. Somebody who actually graduated <laughs> from, from college on, the, on that end of it. And both of them said, you, learn, you taught us how to communicate with other people that weren't like ourselves, right? Figure out how to talk to somebody that is different than you or speak to them in a way that they can speak speak to it. So we've always, as a family, have always been inclusive. What, you know, it doesn't matter what stripes you are or not stripes you are or whatever it is, you're always welcome into the into the family. And we, we're pretty we're pretty eclectic. We have everything from African Americans to Jewish to poor uh, to um well, I thought that all changed, yeah. Yeah, right. Or have um um Latinx, or I don't know what the, I don't get myself into trouble here, but, but uh, Latino, right? I don't think that's, I think that's the right terminology at this point. But sister-in-laws and all this stuff. We have Austrians um, in, in the family. So we, we were always been eclectic. And one of the great things, talk about family, one of the great things that we do, we're about ready to have it on Saturday. You know, we're just such a huge group of people, we're like 20, 30 people that show up at these events we all hold hands we all have different opinions about things because we're very opinionated go figure Absolutely. <laughs> go figure <laughs> all right Absolutely. but we hold each other's hands we sell each tell each other we love them and then hold on right you know and and it's funny it, it, it's great one of the joys in my life is to sit at a kitchen table at my house and watch my father and my 20 something year old daughter debate a topic we won't talk about topics right we'll stay away from topics but debate a topic and debate it passionately about it and they're from two very different opinions right on it on that end of it and what happens at the end of it pop give her a hug give her a hug and tell her i love you see you next week it's the way it should be whatever it is you mean so, we can disagree and still love each other yeah exactly we, we can disagree you have to work at that you have well, to work so. at that hey, you know Everybody has a different opinion about stuff like that. So well, this, is, this is from Christopher Eagle, who's watching the show. Hey, Christopher. He says, as a millennial, he's a millennial, times have changed. Times have really changed. Putting people, people are putting themselves, their jobs, their careers, their traveling, and whatever first before seriously dating or getting married, which, which puts marriage and children later in life. I feel like it's rare to hear people getting married at 20 years old. The most recent weddings I have been to have been people in their late 20s and early 30s. And he's right. So he's I was, definitely right. I was going to think of the culture we're in right now, like the different generations. Are, this is one of the first few non, I mean, take Iraq and I, I, Afghanistan, I, like the first few non-war generations now, that we have the time to spend on ourselves and our adventures, whether it be you know, businesses or just wanting to not be tied down in a sense. Um, I know with myself, I didn't consider marriage or anything like that until into my 30s. And it was more just, I wanted to live a free life. To but say. It's, it's interesting. That's the same with me. I didn't consider it until I was in my 30s. Uh, you know, but your, your, your rise to where you are now was happening in your 20s. 100%. So, you know, we both had it happen at the same time. Yeah. Um, in the same circles. And it didn't, that just didn't fit in. Right. But also society accepted that at that point. It was okay to be single uh, until your 30s. Uh, it was okay to not have kids until your 30s. Now, now, would I have done it a little bit sooner? Now knowing what fatherhood takes? 
Maybe. Yeah. Right, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Well, this is what, a young man's game with the, the little oh, dude, amount it's of so sleep physical. I'm right it's now. so physical. I don't know about that. One of my jokes is, is you know, you should become a father when, when you're 60 or 70 or whatever because I don't sleep a whole bunch. You know, when you hit a certain age, you don't sleep a lot. So it's a, it's a stupid joke. But it's interesting. What Yona and I were having, Yona, um, Yasmin, our oldest daughter, um, and we were up there. We were just having this, this conversation, this debate. And it's kind of, you know, it's just it is what it is. We were young, by today's standards, we were young parents. We're also relatively young grandparents, right? Um, you're relatively young, you know, as far as great-grandparents go. Oh, he's very young for great-grandparents. You know, it, it, great. But we were, we were just talking about this. We are now at an age, at 60. I'm not, Yona, well, we're, I'm almost 60, Yona may or may not be 60. I don't want to get myself nope. into trouble on this stuff of it. But we're going to get to see our grandkids grow up. Yeah. Right? We're going to participate. We're going to be at a point where, where our health allows us to do this. Our fiscal ability allows to do this because we're at that point in our lives. And we were having this conversation with, geez, you know, if we would have waited until 30 or 40 to have kids, we might not have that opportunity. To us, that's important right now. Um, but we sure as hell didn't plan it. I, I, can, I can assure you that. That did not happen. It was, uh, matter of fact, with uh, daughter number two, I did the proverbial, hey, honey, how did that happen? <laughs> Conversation, so. Well, with Colleen and I, we didn't start dating until I was 36. She was 37. And I remember us six months in, we were walking down Preston, and it just came up. She's like, I feel like there's a timer on this relationship. Oh. Yeah. Because we were very serious about each other. We were, yeah, planned on moving in together, all that. And she's like, if it's going this way, like, I do want kids. And I'd never thought of them. I'm like, sure. Like, I feel like wanting kids is with the right partner. And with Colleen, like 100%, who was happy to be a parent with her. Uh, but that did put a pressure on our relationship to a certain extent, to where we conceived our first child the week after our honeymoon. Um, and then next one, a few months after it was okay, after the second one was ready to go. Um, so you're doing this podcast. All right. right. So let's talk about a little bit. About fatherhood. Uh, let's specifically. Talk, let's, yeah. talk, let's talk about that a little bit, please. And so, I can already tell, dude, since you've come on the show to now, the podcasting experience is further refining your already A-plus broadcasting skills. That's uh, Well, I mean, you were asking very good questions to Keith and um, Pop. You were setting the pace and tempo. I could just tell that it's like refining something that you're already good at. Well, I've been on the I Love Seville show. I know you have. Times. I know you have. I'm a lot learning. Of times. I'm a lot learning. Of times. You're you're good at it. Kevin Yancey's watching in Waynesboro. He says he's Keith's age now and has two daughters, six and ten years old. Kevin Yancey, six and ten, two daughters. He married at forty, and his first child was at forty-five years old. Daniel Pettit is watching. He says hi to Pop, Dan Pettit who we fondly dubbed Mustache Dan Petta. He said his daughter just got her PhD. She's been engaged for five years, and now she's planning a wedding, and she's 35 years old. Uh, so they're, they're highlighting or they're, they're emphasizing how it's happening later in life. Yeah, it's, it's a thing, right? It's a, it's a reality. That's, that's what's happening, good, bad, or indifferent. It was funny, as everybody was talking, and at some point somebody should do a little research on that. I wonder in the 20s, after World War I, right, in the roaring 20s, I wonder if people were waiting later to get married at that, at that point. Just, just to kind of, you keep on connecting what's happening now, Jerry, to, you know, the euphoria, you know, uh, things are trying to go. Post-pandemic, we've associated with the roaring 20s with the impact it's going to have with people going out. I'm curious to see if the pandemic and COVID is going to delay um, parents and, and, and birthing. Maybe it's the opposite, though. Well, because I, people I'm, are quarantining. Yeah. So you what? think it's you think it's going to make it go faster? Oh, we've got a onesie that says they did not stay six feet apart. Well, you guys were married. <laughs> you guys were married. Yeah, true. But you have those other partners that are there, and maybe it didn't come up. But then there's because you know Durac. I mean, late, prophylactic sales dropped considerably during the pandemic. That's documented. Okay, great. Thanks for the information. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, <laughs> people were not. Thanks for the information. People were not hooking up. They weren't hooking up. Hold on up. a second. 
Uh, let that. me write that down. They weren't hooking should, up. Should, you know, it's should true. We, should we get into the story that maybe not everybody uses one of those? Maybe that might be. Well, what, you can if you're going to be a... <laughs> no, no. We'll not, stop oh, there. We'll, we'll stop, stop there. there. Yeah. We'll stop there. I got my dad here. Yeah, you got your dad there. Put that magnet on over the, that arm. Um, all right, so why don't we close with this topic? What is it about fatherhood that you love, Kerry Rock? So, you know, with the do good Seabill thing, hey, we've talked a couple times, my, my basic answer is always being a part of something that's bigger than yourself. Being a parent is even bigger than that. Like being able to hopefully live a good life and a good example to provide that to my kids. Um, and then just seeing them in the morning. Like I told you this morning, like my, my daughter whacked the hell out of my shins, stepped on my toe, and I'm ready to be angry as hell. And then when she gets that high note in a frozen song, we're singing together. And then she says, I love you, Daddy, and gives me a mooch, then goes off to daycare. It's like those singular moments. They may not, in the quantitative realm, it, they may not equal the same amount of time as the times that people will consider bad times, but they are so much more valuable than that. And then I can, I can hark on those. Um, I have a video that I kept that my daughter and my wife sent of my daughter cheering me on when I did a, a charity bike ride last year. And it's her just yelling, go, my daddy, go. It's like she knows I'm her daddy. She knows I'm going to protect her. She knows I'm there for her. Now, we're going through a mommy phase, but I know still like there's those shiny moments where she runs through the room and just dive tackles me for a hug. And there you, you go, man. You, 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 can't you, can't explain, that. you can't explain that to a non-dad. To a there's non no bank account. Any of those no, no amount of money in your bank account that could that can't beat that. Can't no. beat that. No. How about you, Pop? Well, you, uh, we've been very fortunate. We, uh, we've seen them grow through, and we grew. We were married early, so we had to grow. And they grew with us. And, you know, there's, like they say, there's no manual. You know what I mean? There's no, so we had to do, we, uh, we were concerned providing a home and the future and safe for our children. And luckily we see them all come and our grandchildren. You see, when you're younger, you get to see all of that. You grow together. I mean, you, maybe we missed a few opportunities because of the family. You know, so, well, I can't do that. I can't travel around the country. I can't do this because uh, I have the, uh, the obligation of my family. But long, you know, looking back, there's a lot of great times with the hugs and uh, teaching them how to play football and uh, baseball you know, and fishing together and watching your daughter, uh, you know, grow up with a little cutesy cutesy and all that other stuff. <laughs> that's uh, that's really uh, really. Uh, now you see them grow as uh, parents. I had the opportunity. Or grandparents. Uh, oh, grandparents. Oh, great grandparents. You know, you see the things. Now, you don't say as much as you used to. You learn how to zip it, basically. But, you know, you see the good things and the bad things, and they're learning. You know, uh, well, that ain't going to work, or this ain't going to work, or, oh, the children are this way. Well, leave the kids alone. They'll, they'll work their way out, you know, they, you, uh, especially with this uh, uh, pandemic thing going on that uh, everybody said, oh, what's... You know, we went through uh, many of uh, being sick. Keith was, uh, we were Here young married. Yeah. We had a little apartment, and uh, Keith was born, and he had the, uh, he went into convulsions. So we, uh, now where is the book on convulsions? You know? So we, uh, we. Uh, convulsions. This is the first time I've heard this story. And we had to, actually we had the doctor come to the house with this bag. You know? That's old school right there. Yeah. yeah, right there. And we had to soak him in, the, his fever was so high, he had to soak him that's in the tub to cool to bring the fever down, you know. Now that's an experience that we learned, you know, and then, then with all the other children and coming by, you know, you, you just say, okay, you just get through it, do the best you can. And uh, now we, uh, we go to school with them, play with them, fish with them. We went fishing many times 
would like that. I'd like that. With you, the, you want to tell the sink the sink the car story uh, and how no, I got blamed for no, that? No, no we're not going to tell that story. No, how you, how you weren't I even wasn't there. even you, there. You, you and Grandpa <laughs> sunk the truck, right? Yeah. And I wasn't there, and there may or may not have been whiskey involved in it at the time. Not from you, but from Grandpa's perspective. No, they we sunk were, the freaking truck. Oh, we did it. So we did it soberly. Yeah. And and I wasn't even there. And we I used to launch for- a boat lo- locally. Uh, we liked fishing so much. We got a boat, and the boat, you know, it was a boat that had to be worked on naturally. You know, could get something new. And uh, so my father and I said, "Well, let's get another motor." So we went. We bucked up together. We bought a motor t- together, and uh, we put it on this. I'm boat. at school, guys, when this is happening. And. Uh, I bought a stainless steel propeller. I said, let's try this. And we go in there, and we launched the boat, and we had to go to work. So I said, all right, that's good. Everything's working. You know, it's like getting a new car. You want to drive it, you know? So uh, cranking this up, and I had a, an international... Uh, 1966, uh, right? Yeah, Harvest, uh, mm-hmm. whatever it was. The first Suburban that was ever made was a Harvester International... Yeah. We used to call it the dental, but it was a travel. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, no AC, by the said way. Said it was standard shift. So we're cranking this up, and it's not going fast enough for me. So I'm pushing the. Oh, shoulder. you're impatient. Go, go figure. I'm pushing it on a on a hole to get into the liner. <laughs> it's not going fast, and I noticed that the, the 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 truck moved, and all of a sudden she popped out of gear. And she started rolling down. And my father got in there, and he was getting into the car, the front of the car, trying to hit the brake, and it was all underwater by this time. And people at these launches used to stay, uh, watch people do these things. That was their entertainment, I guess. <laughs> and, and I hear, oh, so- my God, he's going to die. What's he, what's he talking about? It was told my father was going was trying to find the pedal, and he's going down, and the water's up there. And actually, it was his fault. It was totally my yeah, fault. It was Keith's fault. Was I was yeah. not there. It was my but, fault. Uh, anyway, we sunk. We sunk the uh, sunk car. car. Sunk we car. sunk the car. How'd you get it out? The fire uh, I, it out. The uh, Seaford Volunteer Fire Department pulled it out. Got pulled it out. And I have here, here. This is you know, Lieutenant and Rescue Two. You know, the big bad Lieutenant Rescue Two, the, the busiest I was, rescue. I was, was the truck needless to say, I was very humble. Could you still drive the truck? Uh, well, we. Th- this oh. is the uh, the. This gets better. <laughs> we we got home. I had a a friend of mine, Marty Flanagan, told me to the house. The next day, it was got, we uh, drank. Keith and I, we drained the crankcase and I cleaned everything up and we got it running the next day of course he didn't want to do that but uh, it's, it's, that's what he had to this do is, that's interesting you should say that I remember as it I, you know it was one of the at, when I was growing up I hated it right but he always took me to work with him so I always went to work I've always learned you know how to work on a vehicle or how to frame or how to do that and you know as a kid eight nine ten years old growing up the kids are playing stickball in the street and i had to go to work i hated it but in, in, later in life yeah you can do a lot of stuff i can i can do a lot of stuff but yeah. i remember that shut up and nail shut up and nail <laughs> that's what i got no but we uh we, he's you, promised me he's gonna fix that door Oh, we should have told Papa about Papa. Fix it. He's gonna fix Papa that fix it. Papa will show up in the truck, a tool the truck. Yeah. But anyway, we show up my, my we get the phone call. I show up with my mother, right, and the firemen are there and the police are there and all this stuff. And literally, I got blamed for not being there. If I was there, that would not have happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was. Uh, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. So I want to touch on something you said. You greatest generation, tough guys, nails. But when you're talking about the convulsions. Where are you mentally as a father? Because it's our job as fathers to be the strength, to be the powerhouse, to be like the iron that our family leans against. Well, you don't Where panic. were you when, she, when he was going through the convulsions? Like, I know when my daughter, we had to go to an emergency room. I never felt more helpless in my life, but I had to put on that strong face for my wife. How did you handle that in your time, and then how did you do that? So my daughter convulsed, too. That's the first time I heard that story. We, my daughter at three months convulsed, but I'll let Pop tell that story. Where did you find that strength to keep being 
the strong husband. The that's, strong. Your, that's your place. You that's just your did place it. as a father. You just did you it. Don't put the, can you, you don't put the shit pot on. You just say, okay, let's go get it. But there was, so there's got to be a result, and God forbid the, it was more serious, but that was out of your control. You know, you... Uh, I, but yeah. but at, at that time, you were a fireman for a few years. Yeah. Go back to that military question on how being a father. So I, I literally, this is the first time in 60 years I've heard this story. I did not know I was convulsed. Yasmina, uh, at the time of three months, was having femoral convulsions, which is the same thing. Her fever would go over 100 and she would spike. And, it, and talk right. about a helpless feeling. But what happened was, is at that time, I just wrapped up the core. Training just kicked in, right? You know, you, 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 you become laser focused, right? When, you know, uh, you know, if right now, God forbid, something not so good was going to happen in this room, I guarantee you all of us would have started laser focusing on, on taking care of the job and taking care of what we need to do to get it but done. What needs to be done. What needs to be done. So that's what it was, at least for me. Because if you ever see Yasmin, the next time she comes over, you'll see this huge scar on top of her, her eye because I was wearing a Carhartt jacket with the big brass bucket. So when she was convulsing, I thought she was choking. So I flipped her over. She was like three months old. And I started doing this. And when I did it, it cut her eye. So I had to bring it to the ER. She was bleeding like crazy. Man. Convulsing. If you don't think I got handcuffs put on me, you would be wrong. Oh. They, they pulled me aside. Then once we figured out what was going on, then, then everything was fine. But we, you know, you just... Training just took over. You reacted and you went and did it. And I, I think I know you well enough to know that's what you did. Oh, for sure. Right? You laser focus. Yeah, you get it done. You get it but done. And, still that, that, and, that. and that's what Pop was saying. But I, that's literally the first time I heard I convulsed as a, as a child. I did not know that. But that's from the military side. I know Trey's been sick before. He has. How do you handle it? Um, same as Pop said, um, you know, fortunate, and my wife is watching now. Um, she's undoubtedly the rock and foundation of the family. But just try to be steady and consistent. Um, I try to, you know, be the same person each day. Um, someone that's, you know, can be relied upon. And to give some real props, should go to my wife. Um, she's a stay-at-home mom. She's with Absolutely. our boy every day. And toughest, that is jo toughest job in the Toughest oh. job out there. Yep. There's Absolutely. no doubt about it. Well done. Every day. Well done. Toughest job Hands in down. the world. So all the moms um, and dads that are stay-at-home parents, we salute you here. And gentlemen, we salute you for a phenomenal show. Father's Day special. Can I just wrap up with one please, quick thing, if you don't please. mind? I know we're running, we're, we're running way past on time, so please. thank you for doing that. Um, you said spend time, right? Yeah. So, so it, it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, what, what is one of the catchphrases now? Be present, right? In today's world, it's so hard, right? Back, in, back when I was raising children, you didn't have these, right? You didn't have all this distraction that you had. So you had an opportunity to be present. Um, but our youngest daughter, Division I, um, she's a swimmer. So I used to take her to Fork Union Military Academy every morning uh, at 4.30, well, I used to wake up at 4.30, used to be in the pool at 5.30 in the morning. And this is in her high school years and bitched and moaned about it the whole freaking time, right? She would have made a great Marine, right? What, what's a happy Marine, a bitching Marine? So, uh, but it's funny, I got a phone call from her the other day and she said, thank you for doing that. Thank you for taking that time. And you had to drag her out of bed, you had to put her in the water, you know, and you had to make sure you got her and you, you took the time and you were present at it. And at some point in time, you will get that phone call or text or whatever it is going to be at that point in time in, in your life. And they're going to say, thanks, Dad, for doing that. How great does that feel as a dad? You as well, I guess he's thanking you, you, you earlier. You've got to be in charge. Some, it's not always easy. It's not, you, you know, it's like what, what the parent, what the parent that had a chastised child, it's going to hurt me more than you, you know, that's that stuff. bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> you know. But uh, you, you just have to, you may, you may not be liked. So to add a little context you know, you to got, that. You have to just, that's the way it's going to be. You don't want to hear anything about it. And, or you have to do this. You, you make them, you actually make them do it. So you the being edge. a sergeant know what that means. You know, you don't have E6 to. E6 or E5? E5. E6, so, but that's okay. The, uh, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, Always got to be one better, right? Always got to be. But hearing it, hearing, the, hearing, the, hearing the thank you. Yeah. As a dad. Yeah. It's awesome. It, oh, freaking, the best. Freaking awesome. The best. So to put a little context to that, 
my father and I and our families lost everything we had between 2008 and 2010, like $17 million. Like we lost everything we had. And I will tell you, because of losing everything we had, I got the time to spend with my youngest daughter to go there. And you ask what this was worth? If you want to put money to it, it's worth $17 million. $17 million. How do you end better than that? That's a great, great way to end the show. Keith Smith is a grandfather. Pop Smith is a great grandfather. Carrie Rock and I are fathers. And this is the Father's Day special of Real Talk with Keith Smith. And I think the show went very well, don't you, Thank Pop? you, gentlemen. Sure. Well, I always enjoy your company, always. <laughs> you did a great <laughs> job. You did a great job. Keith did a great job. Judah Wickhauer is our director. The show is archived on realtalkwithkeithsmith.com. Thank you kindly for joining us on a glorious Friday here in Charlottesville, Virginia. You guys have a good weekend, and enjoy Father's Day on Sunday. Take care. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good job, awesome. Pops. Pops, you did great. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, for an old guy, yeah. We're going to get a quick photo here, guys. No, no, no. I'm an old guy. You are really old.